This video explains how Adaptive TDMA maximizes the performance and availability of the return link in the HTS network. In traditional TDMA, all vessels transmit data over the satellite using the same symbol rate, modulation, and error correction coding. Since signal strength degrades in bad weather and at the edge of the beam, these in route properties must be configured for the worst case scenario. This limitation precludes the network from implementing faster, more efficient connections. With adaptive TDMA, the return link is composed of in routes that have different combinations of symbol rate, modulation, and coding. For every transmission burst, each vessel can use any available in route its current signal to noise ratio can support. As conditions change, in routes change dynamically to maintain network availability. Let's run through an example to see how this works. Within this satellite beam, all vessels are enjoying clear skies, so they're all connecting at 8 PSK modulation. Vessels D and E are at the center of the beam, where the signal is strongest. Therefore, they're assigned the fastest in routes with the least amount of error correction overhead. Vessels further away are assigned the same modulation, but require more robust error correction due to the weaker signal. Now it starts to rain at vessel B's location, which reduces the signal to noise ratio, or SNR. To ensure no data is lost during transmission, the vessel simply hops onto an in route with expanded error correction. When the storm increases in severity, vessel B hops again, but to an in route that has a lower symbol rate. These smaller blocks of bandwidth are less likely to be affected by interference. Vessel C is now encountering the same conditions. Therefore, it must share the same in route as vessel B. These two vessels will take turns transmitting in alternating time slots. Now vessel E is approaching the edge of the beam, where the signal is weakest. It also hops to a lower in route. As conditions start to worsen for a wider population of vessels, the hub can modify the composition of the in route group to better accommodate them, maximizing the network's capacity. In this example, vessels B and C switch to QPSK modulation, which is slower but much less susceptible to rain fade. Now an additional vessel enters the coverage area of the beam. Like vessel E, it is assigned an in route that's appropriate for the lower signal strength at the outer edge of the footprint. When the weather for vessels B and C improves, the hub reinstates the earlier in route group with the faster, more efficient connections. You can also see that vessel E has transferred to an adjacent spot beam, so it no longer consumes a time slot on this beam. On rare occasions, extreme weather at the hub's location can also affect the properties of the return link. In this case, despite perfect conditions at the vessel's locations, the entire in route group changes to a modulation encoding that the hub can reliably process. When the storm passes, the hub switches back to the in route group that best matches the vessel's current conditions. This concludes our brief overview of Adaptive TDMA, a key advantage of the Mini VSAT Broadband HTS network.